Okay, welcome back. I'm going to be going over my uh, defensive settings for this vid. Uh, I'm going to go over them briefly and then explain exactly why. Um, so first one, on-ball pressure, uh, smother, off-ball pressure. I'm going to put it on gap. Uh, force direction, it's going to be baseline, on-ball screen, ice, on-ball screen center, also going to be ice. Um, hmm. Yeah, it's going to be ice. Uh, the hedge is going to be uh, determined by the on-ball screen, so these can't you can't change, but stay attached. I'm going to put no. Off-ball screen, switch all. Um, yeah, switch all post is going to be front the post. Uh, double team post, I'm putting dig. Double team perimeter on drive. However, I'll change this sometimes um, to... Uh, auto or manual or whatever uh, this uh, switch off ball screens put switch big I mean switch guards um, unless I have two bigs now please switch bigs uh, pre rotate put yes screen help rules uh, leave on auto drive help rules um, and leave on auto as well and then that's gonna be it for the settings now let me go into detail about why I pick which ones I pick um, first one is going to be off ball pressure. Um, the reason why I put gap, and this does change, uh, sometimes I'll put moderate, but the reason why I put um, gap or moderate is because I want to get a little bit more help clogging in the paint. Uh, and anytime uh, the the enemy drives, uh, the next part of it is I kind of want to bait the enemy into passing the ball. Whenever they pass the ball, my on-ball pressure is smothered. So what's going to happen a lot of times is whenever you're, the off-ball defender is going to um, leave him a little bit of space, as soon as the ball comes to his man, he's going to hurry quickly to close that gap, and he's going to basically smother the ball handler. So what happens a lot of times is they'll pass the ball to somebody who think they think is going to be open. However, the defender closes the gap so quickly that it ends up baiting them into a bad pass. Uh... I put smother because I also want to force them to to drive the ball into help uh, and I'm betting a lot of times that my rotations uh, switches are all going to be clean uh, good enough to clean up any kind of uh, any kind of uh, outlet pass uh, force three direction is baseline I do want to play around with this a little bit I do think that forcing middle in certain situations could be uh, better but for the most part facing uh, forcing baseline is going to keep the ball away from the open side it's going to kind of allow you to use the sideline um, uh, and to help contain the ball handler in my opinion uh, it's the best but I mean I, I still think that there are situations where forcing middle could be better uh, on ball screen uh, ice is the best out of all of these I think uh, switching and uh, going under, you know, these, these, uh, I mean, going over is basically the exact same thing as ice. Um, but the reason why we do these is because um, ice ends up uh, basically giving you the best possible situation. Uh, what you would rather have is that you eliminate, uh, find a way to get rid of the pick action altogether. And ice kind of, it, it forces them to, um, to basically go away from the screen and uh, a lot of times I find that whenever I ice it they end up uh, going back to a one-on-one -on -one situation I, obviously there's merit to these other ones as well but I can go more into that in time uh, the hedge is determined by uh, what the what the on ball screen action is uh, the reason why I put stay attached to no is because I I really want to to crowd the paint uh, because we're icing I think that uh, not many people are going to try to uh, to shoot over with the screen. They're going to uh, drive into the paint, and I'm thinking that um, that I'd like the big man to stay in the paint. I especially want them to be able to rotate quickly. So, say for instance, if they toss it out of the, um, uh, I'm, I kind of want to show this. Let me let me get an example going. Okay, 
So I, they they crowded the paint quite a bit. I I need to set up another controller. But basically, the reason why I would put stay attached no is because if if we get help coming like on a double from from this direction here, the big man staying back will allow him to kind of will allow you a little bit more flexibility on how you're going to finish your rotations. So, so say I user control this player here to kind of break off this path the big man would be able to close the gap a little bit faster and kind of patrol the paint just like a little bit more. Um, let me continue real quick. Um, fronting the post because uh, the main way that you stop a front is by having, uh, by swinging the ball around or by dribbling to get it to a better angle. Uh, one of the things that I like to do and the reason why I like fronting the post is because I can user control somebody who's off ball that's not the 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 post player, so I can kind of try to to limit entry passes into the post. Uh, so I don't think that this is too much of an issue, but if it, but if anything, if it does bother me, I'll go to three quarter po uh, three quarter front, uh, right, three quarter top right there. Uh, off ball screen switch all. Um, the reason why, and and this is, I, I think the same thing. Switch rules off ball, switch guards, off ball screen. Okay, so this is anytime you're off ball. And you choose to switch. This are these are the conditions which you're going to switch. I, I think that's how that works. Um, I want us to to keep players from being in a trailing position. I think uh, most teams switch everything. I I'm fine with just switching the guards, but you just don't want somebody to to. If you look at the the play on the top, you just don't want somebody to. Uh, be able to to hit a down screen for a three point or anything like that. I mean, it's simple. I'm not giving up too much because I'm not switching between guards and 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 uh, big men. Uh, double team perimeter on drive. I don't normally do this, um, but if I'm struggling a little bit to contain the the uh, the drive. Uh, not many people have very dynamic offenses where they have good spacing, they can move the ball around. Most of the time, they just drive into the paint. So the reason why I, a pick double team the perimeter on drive is because I can use or control either the on ball defender, the off ball defender, or one of the help defenders, and I can kind of manipulate how the help is going to look like. Um, and I'm going to show a lot of these in in some gameplay. Um, so I on the drive, I'm not going to just immediately go let them go into a a double team. I may use or control one of the players so I can get into rotation a little bit sooner and try to uh, make sure that I'm kind of uh, showing them different looks. I'm not giving them the exact same look every time. Uh, double team post uh, dig. I, I don't like to to immediately like to have a full double team because on a full double team you're gonna have open uh, passes. If you just dig, then um, Setting control double team situations opens up perimeter shots one pass away. What would be the difference? Um, I I don't know if the double team comes from a different part of the of the court. If it comes from the weak side, then that actually could be better um, on either of these. If they come from the weak side, but it does not imply that. It looks like it's just. Um, from the nearest defender, who would be the exact same player on dig? I think that if it if it is a different, then one of these would be better. It'd probably be on dribble, but dig is the one that I use because so far it looks to me like it gives up the least amount of open passes. But I mean, you can use your control, or you can uh, switch to different defenses on uh, entry passes to the post. Um, off ball switch guards. I another one would be switch bigs. I'd rather not switch every single thing because I don't want to create mismatches if I can prevent it. Uh, normally, I uh, I think switching bigs would be the best situation. However, you don't see too many off ball screens where they take advantage of the bigs posting up. Pre rotate. Uh, this is a big one. Um, whenever they go for say a pick and roll or whatever it is, yes, to a certain degree, you don't have to pre rotate, but uh, teams are really good at passing out of a uh, out of help defense. So if they run pick and roll, they'll they'll hit the open uh, open uh, player. The reason why I pre rotate isn't so they can get there in time to stop the the shot. Let me see what it says. Uh, create to use against heavy isolation players. Uh, bring another defender uh, over to contain the drive. The reason why I do this isn't for that. It's because I'm able to as a as a user. 
uh, anticipate who they're going to pass it to as well. So I can see it earlier and that helps me to to uh, select a player that's going to be in rotation so I can kind of uh, user that player or I can uh, go one pass earlier and anticipate who they're going to pass it to. Um, that's the main reason why it helps me. Uh, screen help rules auto, drive help rules auto, and then extended pressure auto. And that ends up the being the settings. I mean, uh, look out for these in in gameplay a lot of what I try to do is just to mix up the looks that I present to them and a lot of that is user switching uh, players um, in the post on the help defenders on ball I'm just constantly trying to mix up what I'm doing with the with the defense I'm not trying to just give them one look but that's the end of the video I hope you enjoyed